Hello and welcome to HIVRNA Test Guide Podcast, your trusted source for HIV testing, with over 4,500 plus testing labs across the United States. You know, the question has been hanging over medicine for, what, 40 years now? Will we ever see a real permanent cure for HIV in our lifetime? Yeah, and for most of that time, honestly, it felt like something way off in the distance. A nice idea, but... Distant. But if you look at the research we've been digging into, clinical trials, uh, regulatory stuff, some really cutting edge science, it really feels like maybe that future isn't so distant anymore. Maybe it's, yeah, maybe it's here. It's a huge shift, definitely. And if you're tracking major health milestones, you really need to get why this year, 2025, is looking like such a turning point for HIV research. It feels fundamental. But moving beyond just managing it. Exactly. Suppressing the virus was revolutionary, but this is different. And that's exactly what we want to unpack for you in this deep dive. We're looking at three um, pretty distinct revolutionary approaches. Lenacapavir, AGT-103T, and this gene therapy, EBT-101. Right. We want to break down what each one does, how they fit together, and really why this year seems to be providing that hard proof that, you know, a cure is closer than we thought. Okay, so maybe let's set the scene first. The current reality. We've got over 38 million people globally living with HIV. Which is a huge number. It is. And we absolutely cannot downplay how vital modern antiretroviral therapy or art has been. I mean, it was a genuine medical miracle back in the day. Totally changed the game. It lets people live long, healthy lives. It pushes the virus down to undetectable levels in the blood, which is crucial because that also means it can't be transmitted sexually. U equals U. Undetectable equals untransmittable. That's the amazing part. Yeah. But there's always a but, isn't there? Art is fantastic management, but it's not actually a cure. No, it isn't. If you're on RT, you have to take that medication every single day for life. Mm -hmm. You miss doses, you stop treatment, mm -hmm. and the virus just roars back. It's this, this constant tether. That's a good way to put it. And the reason for that tether, the scientific reason, is something called the viral reservoir. Ah, yes, the reservoir. The okay. big hurdle. It's the biggest challenge left, really, because even when RT makes the virus vanish from blood tests, tiny amounts of HIV, these dormant hidden copies, they stay tucked away. Where? Like, where are they hiding? Deep in certain immune cells, in tissues like the lymph nodes, the gut, even the brain sometimes. Mm -hmm. Places RT doesn't fully reach or where the virus can just sleep. So it's basically just lying low, waiting for you to stop the medication. Precisely. Waiting for the pressure to come off. And that hiding spot, that reservoir, is what the science we're seeing emerge in 2025 is really designed to go after, to attack, maybe even destroy. Okay. So this year is so critical because we're seeing, well, solid mid-stage clinical trial results. And they're confirming that three completely different strategies are all working in people at the same time. Right. It's not just one shot on goal. Exactly. We've got long-acting drugs, we've got immune cell engineering, and we've got gene editing hitting key milestones. It's not just theory now. It's actual validated pathways in human patients. Okay. Let's dig into those. Breakthrough number one, Lena Kapavir. You called it a long-acting game changer. Why is a new drug, even a long-acting one, still creating so much buzz if it's still just suppressing the virus? Good question. It's exciting because of how it works and maybe even more importantly, how often you need it. So lenacapavir is the first of its kind. It's a capsid inhibitor. Capsid? Yeah. That's the outer shell of the virus. Exactly. Think of the virus like a tiny capsule or, I don't know, a microscopic tank trying to invade your cells. The capsid is its protective shell, its armor. Okay. Now, pretty much every other HIV drug we've had targets processes after the virus gets inside the cell, like stopping it from copying itself or assembling new virus particles. Lenacapavir messes with that armor, the capsid itself. So it stops the whole invasion process earlier, like jamming the tank's door. Sort of. It disrupts the capsid at multiple points in the virus's life cycle. It stops it from assembling correctly. It stops it from trafficking its genetic material properly into the cell nucleus. It basically throws a wrench in the works much earlier. And that's a completely new weak spot to target. It's a mechanism no other approved drug uses. And that's huge, especially for people who've developed resistance to other types of HIV medication over the years. Okay, that makes sense from a treatment perspective. But here's the part that probably jumps out to listeners. Mm -hmm. Instead of a daily pill. Right. Instead of 365 pills a year, lenacapavir is an injection given just twice a year. Twice a year. Every six months. Two shots. That's it. Wow. That's, that's a massive difference in quality of life, just the mental load of remembering that pill every day. 
gone. Absolutely. And the clinical data backs it up. Trials show that even in patients who had failed multiple other treatments due to drug resistance, lenacapavir worked really well to suppress the virus for months with just those injections. Okay, so fantastic suppression, incredible convenience. Yeah. But still suppression. How does this get us closer to an actual cure? Think of it as building a really, really strong foundation. If you can absolutely guarantee near-perfect viral suppression for six months with just one shot, that gives scientists a stable platform. It buys time and reduces risk when they want to try adding other, maybe more complex or aggressive cure-focused therapies on top. You don't have to worry as much about the virus suddenly flaring up while you're trying something experimental. Ah, I see. So Lena Kapavir could be like the base layer ensuring the virus stays down while other therapies go after the hidden reservoir. Precisely. It's the super reliable safety net that lets you attempt the high wire act of curative strategies. It potentially enables combination therapies aimed squarely at clearing that reservoir. Got it. Okay, that makes perfect sense. It stabilizes things for the next big step. Which brings us, well, squarely into the cutting edge gene therapy. Right. Now we're shifting gears. We're moving from managing the virus however effectively to trying to permanently change the body's relationship with it, maybe even eliminate it. Yeah. Therapies that actually alter our own cells to fight or resist HIV. Mm. This feels like sci-fi territory almost. It does a bit, <laughs> but it's happening. And these gene therapies are designed specifically to hit that reservoir, the place RT can't clear. The first big one we need to talk about is AGT-103T. Okay, AGT-103T. And this one falls under the umbrella of what we often call a functional cure. Okay, let's define that straight away. What do we mean by functional cure? How is that different from just a cure? Good point. A functional cure means the goal is to modify a person's immune system so it can control the virus indefinitely, even after they stop taking daily RT medication. The virus might still be present in the body, maybe in tiny amounts in that reservoir. But the immune system keeps it totally suppressed on its own. Exactly. To undetectable levels, ideally. So you're functionally cured, you don't need daily pills, the disease isn't progressing, even if we can't prove every last trace of virus DNA is gone from every cell. Okay. So how does AGT-103T achieve that? How does it give the immune system this permanent upgrade? It's pretty ingenious, actually. Doctors take a sample of the patient's own T cells. Those are the key white blood cells HIV targets. Right. They take them into the lab and genetically modify them. The specific modification aims to mimic a rare, naturally occurring genetic trait some people have. You mean the CCR5 mutation, the one that makes some people naturally resistant to HIV infection? That's the one. Yeah. CCR5 is like the main doorway HIV uses to get inside T cells. This therapy essentially edits the T cells to remove that doorway or block it. So they're basically putting a permanent do not disturb sign on the cells HIV wants to infect. Precisely. Then they grow billions of these modified, now HIV resistant T cells in the lab and infuse them back into the patient. And these modified cells take hold. That's the goal. They should spread, multiply, and create a long-lasting population of immune cells that HIV simply can't infect effectively. They form a self-renewing defense force. And are we seeing this work? What's the 2025 connection here? Yes, this is where the excitement is building. Early human trials for therapies like AGT-103T are showing really promising results. We're seeing participants maintain viral control for years, literally years, after stopping their daily RT. And the data coming out around now, phase two results, are confirming that these modified cells are persisting long term and seem to be doing their job. It's showing sustained control. That's incredible. A potential future? without daily pills. But that's a functional cure, keeping it under control. What about the ultimate prize? Getting rid of it completely. A sterilizing cure. Ah, yes, the sterilizing cure. That's the dream, isn't it? Completely eliminating every last copy of the virus, including the hidden provirus integrated into our own DNA. Wiping the slate clean. Exactly. And that's where the other major gene therapy approach comes in, the one that feels even more futuristic, EBT-101. And this uses CRISPR technology. CRISPR, the gene editing tool, molecular scissors we hear so much about. That's it. EBT-101 uses CRISPR, programmed very specifically. Programmed to do what? What are these molecular scissors cutting? They're programmed to find the specific genetic sequence of that hidden HIV provirus, the viral DNA that got stitched into the host cell's own DNA in the reservoir. The CRISPR system is delivered to the cells, hunts down those integrated viral fragments, and makes a precise cut, snipping the HIV DNA out of the human genome. The aim is to literally erase the virus's blueprint from the infected cells. Just 
cut it out. That sounds like the definitive one and done fix. But I imagine using molecular scissors inside our DNA, well, that must come with risks, challenges. Oh, absolutely. The biggest concern is always off-target effects. CRISPR is incredibly precise, but it's not absolutely perfect. Meaning it might cut somewhere it shouldn't. Exactly. There's a small risk it could accidentally edit a similar looking sequence in the human DNA, which could potentially cause problems like disrupting a normal gene. Ensuring safety is paramount. So what's the news on EBT 101 for 2025? Are we seeing safety data? Efficacy? Both. EBT 101 has already gone through initial safety trials in humans. The key updates expected this year again, part of why 2025 feels pivotal, involve more data from these early participants. We're looking for confirmation of long-term safety, but also, crucially, evidence that it's actually reducing the size of that hard-to-reach viral reservoir. Is it successfully cutting out the virus? So it's this fascinating race, isn't it? AGT-103T reprogramming the immune system for lifelong control versus EBT-101 trying to erase the virus completely with one shot. It is, and that scientific tension, that competition between approaches is really accelerating the whole field. But look, it's important to stress these aren't just wild theories anymore. Right. They're grounded in the fact that we know defeating HIV is possible because it's already happened in a few remarkable cases. Yeah, we have to mention the pioneers, the proof-of-concept patients, the famous Berlin patient Timothy Ray Brown. And later, the London patient, Adam Castiello. What happened with them again? It involved transplants, right? Correct. Both had leukemia or lymphoma and needed bone marrow transplants. Crucially, their doctors found donors who had that rare natural CCR5 genetic mutation, the one that makes T cells resistant to HIV. Ah, the same mutation AGT103T tries to mimic. Exactly. So the transplant essentially wiped out their old immune system and replaced it with one built from these naturally HIV-resistant stem cells, and the HIV disappeared. They were cured. Now, that transplant procedure itself is way too risky for people who don't have life-threatening cancer, obviously. Far too dangerous. But those cases were absolute proof of principle. They showed the world. If you can make the immune system resistant, you can achieve a functional cure. It was possible. And more recently, there was the Geneva patient. That case was a bit different, wasn't it? Yes, very interesting. This individual also had a stem cell transplant, but the donor didn't have the CCR5 mutation. Yet, after stopping R under close supervision, their virus remained undetectable for 20 months. It seems their own immune system, perhaps reset or altered by the transplant process in some way we don't fully understand, managed to control the res residual virus. So every one of these cases, even if unique, gives researchers vital clues. Absolutely. They act like guideposts. They tell scientists which pathways blocking entry, like CCR5 modification, or perhaps other immune control mechanisms, or even direct viral eradication like CRISPR, are actually viable directions to pursue. Okay, so let's bring this back to the listener. You're hearing about all this incredible progress injections twice a year, mm -hmm. potential functional cures, maybe even sterilizing cures on the horizon. What does this tidal wave actually mean for people right now? I think fundamentally it means the entire conversation, the entire focus has shifted. We've moved from just managing HIV as a chronic illness. Which was already a massive achievement. Yeah. A huge achievement. But now the focus is squarely on curing it. And you see experts in the field looking at the data from these trials, starting to make predictions. Like what? Timelines. Yeah. Many are suggesting the first commercially available cures, likely functional cures initially, could potentially arrive by 2030. Maybe even a bit sooner, depending on how fast regulatory agencies move once the phase three data is in for therapies like AG2103T or maybe even EBT101 down the line. 2030. That's, that's really not that far away. It's incredibly hopeful. Yeah. But let's inject that dose of reality. What are the big immediate roadblocks? What stands between these amazing lab results and getting these therapies to everyone who needs them? Oh, the hurdles are significant, let's be honest. The biggest ones right now are probably cost and logistics. Even therapy sounds expensive. It is currently incredibly expensive. We're talking potentially hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of dollars per patient because it's personalized. They're using your own cells, modifying them individually. Manufacturing is complex. And it's not just the drug cost, right? Yes. The procedure itself. Exactly. Collecting the T cells, modifying them, quality control, the infusion process. It requires highly specialized labs and hospitals. Initial access is definitely going to be limited. And what about Lena Capivir? That's just, just in injection. But twice a year, does that create challenges too, especially globally? You bet. 
Think about rolling out a mandatory twice yearly injection schedule in, say, rural parts of sub Saharan Africa. You need reliable cold storage for the drug, trained healthcare workers to give the shots, systems to track patients and make sure they come back exactly six months later. Yeah, that sounds much harder than shipping bottles of pills. It's a massive logistical challenge for global health equity. Plus, we still need more long term data. How long does the effect of AGT 103T truly last? Does the CRISPR edit in EBT 101 hold perfectly for 30, 40, 50 years without unforeseen issues? We don't know yet. So caution is still needed. Absolutely. The rollout will be careful, starting with specific patient groups and trials, but there's precedent here. You mean with art itself? Yeah. When the first effective RT cocktails came out in the mid-90s, they were astronomically expensive, tens of thousands per year per patient, totally out of reach for most of the world. But now? Now, thanks to generic competition, global health initiatives, tiered pricing, RT costs a fraction of that in many places, allowing millions to access treatment. So history suggests that once a breakthrough is proven safe and effective. The pressure builds. Competition increases, technology gets refined, manufacturing scales up, and eventually costs come down and access expands. It takes time, but it happens. The crucial first step is getting that proof, and that's what 2025 is delivering. Okay, so let's try and pull this all together. Yeah. We've got these three main pillars emerging strongly this year, explaining why it feels like a turning point. First, Lana Cabavir. Right, perfecting long-term suppression with just two shots a year, making life easier and, critically, creating that stable base for cure strategies. Then pillar two, AGT-103T and similar approaches. The functional cure pathway. Engineering your own immune system to control HIV indefinitely, potentially freeing people from daily medication for years and maybe for life. And the third most ambitious pillar, EBT-101. The sterilizing cure dream using CRISPR's molecular scissors to literally try and cut the virus out of your DNA, aiming for complete eradication. And it's the combination, right? The fact that all three of these very different powerful strategies are showing real promise in humans simultaneously. Just exactly it. That comprehensive assault, better management, functional control, and potential eradication is why the entire narrative around HIV has shifted. You know, we're really not asking, is a cure even possible anymore? The question now is becoming, okay, when will it be ready? And how do we get it to everyone? It's a profound change. Mm. And maybe that leads us to the final thought for you, the listener, something to really consider as we wrap up this deep dive. Mm -hmm. If all this incredible science is moving forward, What's the single most important thing you can do right now? It's actually quite simple. Know your HIV status. Absolutely critical. Because if you do test positive, getting diagnosed early and starting on today's effective RT is crucial. It keeps your viral load down, protects your immune system, keeps you healthy, and it puts you in the absolute best possible position to benefit from these breakthrough cures when they do become available. Being undetectable, being stable on treatment, that's likely going to be the prerequisite for accessing many of these future therapies. So being prepared, knowing your status, taking care of your health now, that's your first step towards being ready for this truly hopeful future we've been talking about.